Just as he chose, chose us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love, having predestined us into the adoption of sons through Jesus Christ himself, according to the, his good pleasure and his will, to the praise and the glory of his grace, by which he had made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have received the redemption from the blood, forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, that he, he may abound to each one of us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. The Bible says here, it says, Blessed be the God of our Father. Why? The scripture says, for He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. I want to declare over your life today that you are blessed with every spiritual blessing. That means everything you need. There's no lack in your life. Everything that you need, God has already provided. God has already made it available to you. He says He has blessed you with every spiritual blessing. Won't you speak that over your life? I am blessed, I am blessed. with every spiritual, blessing. every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Amen. That means the only way I can ac access it is in Christ. The second thing is that because it is in Christ in heavenly places, it cannot be corrupted. It cannot be contaminated. It cannot be limited because the reality is that Heaven is without limits. Amen? And, and, and it says it's perpetual. It's not dependent on what the circumstances is, what I'm going through in my life. He says, I'm blessed with every spiritual blessing. And then he goes on and he says, I've received redemption, I've received forgiveness. And then he says to us, in all wisdom and prudence, 
That means in the wisdom of God, God has decided to make known to us the mysteries of God, which is the mystery of His will. That means God in Himself decided that the best thing for man is for Him to reveal His will for our lives. Imagine that. That means you shouldn't struggle to know what the will of God for your life is. Because the Bible says, as I access God, he reveals his will because it's not his desire to keep it hidden from us. It's not his desire to keep it a mystery from us. It is his desire to reveal it to us. May God reveal his will in your life. Amen. May you know what God's will for your life is. And, 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 and the fact that he said, he said he purposed it in himself. Father, we come to you. Know that we are forgiven. Know that we are no, we know that we are washed by the blood of Jesus. Know, oh God, that we have sometimes sinned and come short of the glory of God. But we have redemption through Christ Jesus. And because we are in Christ, you have blessed us with all spiritual blessings. That that which you spoke over Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, those that were men, patriarchs of the faith, those that you spoke through your servants throughout the scriptures, we can appropriate because we've been adopted into the family of God. We, have, we are sons, we are heirs of the promise. We are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. That today we have this, we will receive every spiritual blessing that you have for us. And we know that your thoughts towards us is perfect. Bless your people as we worship, as we praise, as we spend time in your presence. This morning, we are excited, O oh God, of receiving all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen, amen. Well, God bless you. Welcome to all of you that are here this morning. To those that are joining us online, welcome to you as well. Amen. And so you that are here in the church, you can wave to somebody. You may not be able to shake their hands, but you can wave. Amen. Let me say, I see you. Not that you're saying, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. goodbye. But it's like, I'm acknowledging that I see you. Amen. God bless you. Let's just fellowship together. Hallelujah. Come on, we lift the name of Jesus on high this morning. And it's all about praising you. We thank you for this day.
every area of your life, whether it be in your home, whether it just be with you as an individual, in your family, in your marriage, at your workplace, at your school, at your university, at your business, may every high thing must come down. Yes. Yes. Every stronghold will be broken in the name of Jesus. Come on. You know the things that are standing as obstacles in your way. You know the things that have mounted up as spiritual attacks against you. So right now, we cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We bring into captivity every thought, every plan of the evil one. We bring it against the knowledge of Christ. We bring it under the subjection of Christ himself. Jehovah Shammah. Come on, you, you, you don't have the solution in yourself. You, you, you cannot have the victory in your own ability or in your academic achievement or in your accolade, but you, you have it in Christ. give you the praise, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, for you are surely in this place. And so Lord, as individuals, we stand before our God. And we say like David did, say, creating me a clean heart, renewing me a right spirit, cast me not away from your presence. This I ask in Jesus. And everybody said amen. And amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. Thanks to worship team. Amen. Bless the Lord. It's good to see all of you that are here today. And also for those that are joining us online. The Lord bless you. Thanks for joining with us today. We're excited in knowing that God is in control. Amen. We're excited in knowing that God is in charge of everything. And so today I want to speak today on a topic or it's more a question. Am I in control? Amen. And so it implies two aspects. One, just basically what the question says. Am I in control of my life? That means have I gotten to the place where I've lost control or I've yielded control to someone else? Or well, the second thing, second aspect is, who's in control? I mean, is it God that's in control, or is it me? Now, one of the things that I that prompted this is that the last year has taught us that we're not in control of anything. Yeah. That means just by me wishing for something, just by me desiring something. It cannot change anything. Amen? They said that wishes were horses, beggars were dry. Eh? Yeah. Okay. So that means not every wish and every desire of yours will be fulfilled. Yeah. Because not every wish and all, all our desires don't find its origins in God. But it's those things that are in God is for us. So I want to talk to you a little bit about us getting to that place where we, we learn how to manage ourselves. How we learn how to bring our bodies into subjection of the Spirit of God. How we allow the Spirit of the Lord to dictate and direct our lives. And so a lot of our personal choices and decisions that we make must find its origins in the Word of the Lord or from a word from the Lord. Amen. Those, those are the important elements. I also want to say congratulations before I start on to Tandoa. She was our matriculant for last year. She has been successful even in a difficult year. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we thank God for that. Amen. Yeah. I know even Paso is excited. 
I didn't get invited for the party. So it was a lockdown party, amen. Amen. But we're excited about that. I know some of you have birthdays. Neil's got a birthday today. Yesterday was Mabongi's birthday. Amen. So to all the birthday people, the people that made it just before the 29th. The 29th of February. But the Lord is with you, amen. So we're excited about that. I'm excited to see a lot of you. We didn't see you all since last year. Amen. So good to see you back. Good to see that you're alive. Some of you have lost some weight. We won't talk about the others. Amen. But the Lord is good, amen. So it's good, amen. One of the things that I've learned is that, and we emphasize a lot, whether it was in leadership training, whether it was even in church circles, in finding your purpose in life. But I found that the challenge is that focusing just on your purpose is not enough. Yeah. That means many people focus on finding their purpose, but less people focus on finding a moral compass and character and godly character. So the emphasis is in the destination. But the, em the emphasis is not on the person that is going to arrive at the destination. What kind of person arrives at the destination? That means, how do I live my life before I get to where I'm going to? That makes a very, very important element to us. So even if we look at our country and we want to change the dynamics of our country and we want to change the political landscape of our country or the economic landscape of the country, it's not just on the end result. And the focusing on the end result doesn't bring the change because you still have to deal with people. And as long as people are in the equation and if you don't work on the individual, the person arriving at the end may come there broken, they come there with some issues, with some character flaws, amen. So, uh, so sometimes we can get, our, we sometimes even teach our children, focus on becoming a lawyer, becoming a doctor, becoming a, uh, an accountant, becoming a professional person. We focus on being a professional person. But we don't focus on what does the professional person need in order for them to function. Because they don't only need data or information in terms of that will make them active in their career, but they need character traits that will make them relevant when they get there. That means a doctor that has no moral ethical value system, becoming a doctor can corrupt him. So that means sometimes, you know, we've noticed this and churches have often said it, that the anointing can take you places where your character won't keep you. Yeah. So being just anointed, but having a character flow, the higher you go, your character flow becomes more exposed. And you know that the more higher you go, eventually your exposure or your deal or, or you're being dealt with will be more public. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. So we need to understand this. In our development, in finding, because your purpose is really about finding the meaning for your life. Yeah. But your personal, uh, uh, personal um, development and personal leadership of yourself is about character, godly character, moral values. If you find your purpose outside personal leadership of your life, you will have a challenge. So our idea is, and, I, and this is important for parents, even in bringing up your children, don't prepare them just for the destination. We know God has a plan, God has a will. We know there are giftings and graces that they have. But don't celebrate their graces with character flaws. Be prepared to shape them to become responsible citizens, responsible people. Our young men treat them how to become godly men so that they don't beat up on women later on. They need to know 
If they can't bring the anger under control now, later on it's going to come out on somebody else. And, and you as a mother or a father can see it, you, you bring that thing under control. You teach them how to pray, you teach them how to fast, you teach them how to bring the body under control. Is it? So that it doesn't end up becoming somebody else's problem or a problem for them later on. Because you know sometimes we celebrate our children so much that we are unable to tell them where their faults are. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can be a little bit real with you today. Amen. Amen. So this is not ordinary preaching and calling it fire down from heaven, but this is about teaching how to engage with the word. Yeah. Because God calls us to personal accountability. He said, bring your body under the subjection of God. Submit your body unto God. So we have to learn how to bring our mind, our, our behavior, our morals, our values. And, and morals and values are really shaped from home. They can't be shaped by society. But if we allow them, if they're not shaped at home, they will be shaped by society. So you need to shape them at home. Amen? How many of you know that people don't end up corrupt? They, or they don't start off corrupt. They end up corrupt. And, 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 and it's mostly, as we say, there's a system that corrupts people. No, no, no. There's an innate character. It's a character problem. You know, if, if you steal something and you get away with it, you keep doing it. Right? And if, you, and, and if people notice that you are doing it and don't correct you, you'll still continue doing it. So the importance is correcting. How do you shape? How do you shape a tree? You shape it while it is growing. You don't take a, you know, like one of these big mango trees that are growing in your yard. You can't, you can't shape it while it's grown, full grown, does it? Because the only way you can shape it then is if by cutting branches. But the reality is, as the tree starts to grow from seed form, you put sticks around it. You start determining how it's going to begin to grow. So how do you start doing it? The Bible says, train them while they were a little. Train them in the way that they should go. When they grow old, they will not depart from it. Amen? This is important. I, that's why I'm so challenged right now because, you know, of, of not being able to have Sunday school and not being able to have you. But the reality is these are top things that we should sit down and talk with our children. Don't only buy them McDonald's and KFC. Don't put them in front of the video games. Sometimes when you see certain things, you just address it. You say, hey, that spirit must come out. Extract it. Painful. Extract it. And you get a little bit of attitude and you get a little bit of mouth. Extract it. You see it. Because you're not dealing with it for now. You're dealing with it in the future. Yeah. Because when it gets older, it's hard to get rid of it. Because they find out, hey, there was nothing wrong with me before. Amen? So I want to challenge you today to take responsibility. Personal leadership, personal influence over your life, personal self-control over your life will affect your public face which your public face will eventually bring you to the place where your purpose is yeah, affected. So therefore we sometimes get people that are public figures, successful people, but they have personal challenges. Have you seen some people that are, pers uh, uh, that are, that, that are very professional in their fields, but in their personal lives they lack self-control? That means they either have a challenge with an addiction to alcohol or to drugs or to gambling. But this person is a professional person. He's saying, how is it possible? Because there's a character flow in it. So that means you can be a professional person but not be professional at life. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. So this is where godly character. So when we start off, the Bible says when we come before God, you present your body as a living sacrifice before God, which is holy and acceptable, perfect service. Amen? That means we teach our children that when they're dating, there are certain things, certain ground rules. Amen? I said to my son, he's dating. I said to him, there are certain things that you don't cross. I said, let me spell it out for you. He get uncomfortable. I said, no, let me spell it out for you. There's no sleeping together before you get married. 
there's no staying out. So if you want to sit down yourself, be around family. If you've got no self-control, come and say, Dad, I want to get married. Amen? You're going to love me after this. <laughs> because I don't want grandchildren before you get married. Amen? You're going to have to have this conversation. I don't want him to be going from girlfriend to girlfriend. Come with a story, there's many fish in the sea. No, 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 no. That's fishing. We people, we're not fish. We stay on the ground here. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Because he'll have a struggle later on coming and lifting his hands before the Lord. Because the spirit of condemnation will be upon him. And he'll struggle. He may struggle in other areas of his life because there's a deficient area in his life. Amen. Be careful. This is what I want us to be real in our developing because we want to know what affects our spiritual life. What affects our spiritual life is the things that we allow and we don't think that are important. We want to say we we'll lift up holy hands, we we'll come to church, we we'll do this type of thing. But our, this part of our lives we will do and our own stuff. Deal with it. If your child is courting, have the conversations with him. If you can't have the conversations as parents, then you need to. Find it. Find somebody that will help you to have that conversation. But have the conversation. Amen? Do things right. The day you're getting married, I want to be able to dance. I want to be able to be excited. Eh? Yeah. And I say, oh, shit. <laughs> What happened? Then they'll come and say, hey, Pastor, didn't get it right. Amen? Come on. Yeah. And we know the challenges out there in our community. Because our community is about right now, you can live together. It's like buying a car. You test drive. No, no, no test driving. Yeah. Our sons and daughters are not cars. Mm, yeah. No test driving. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I'm being a little bit in your face today, but I want you to understand this. Just because you've got a job doesn't mean you live your own life, you do your own things. Yeah. You be responsible. Amen? Yeah. And for, for those that are getting to the place where you finish your studies and getting jobs, your responsibility in your house is important. If you're working and you're earning, you pay, you contribute to the house. You know the struggle that your parents went through, support them. Amen? It's not for fun. The money is not for fun. Amen? Not yeah. for doing your hair and your nails, for buying new tackies and jeans, for wearing it as low as you can. <laughs> Amen? Come on. Yeah. You're going to be responsible. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to be... You see, the thing is that we want to represent our God. When people see us, they must see our God in they must see us as a, as, a, as a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a set-apart people. Yeah. That means we don't live according to the trends of the world. Yeah. We don't follow somebody else's leading. We do the right things. And when you do, when you put the right things in, in its place, when you, when you prioritize God, that's when things begin to fall into place. Yeah. So where am I going to? Let me take you there. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verses 4 to 16. I'm going to read this for you. It says, And my speech and my preaching were not with the persuasive words of human wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen? That your faith must not be in the wisdom of men. That means... You don't come to church to be challenged intellectually. Although there will be a revelation that may stimulate your intellect, but the approach of it is not to begin to just excite you or to just give you fresh thoughts, but it is to strike you into action. How do I implement this in my life? How do I practice this in my life? So I spoke to you a little bit this morning as a father, because I'm a father too, and I deal with the same things you deal with. 
I may not deal with it in the same way. We all got different character uh, and, and different nuances in which we parent, but the reality is that we are faced with similar challenges. So we have to begin to deal with it. And the Bible says here, your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. In verse 6 it says, however, we speak wisdom amongst those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. So that means I can't take the model of the world and try to bring it into church and tell you, parent like how the world tells you to parent, because that's the standard. Because the world, he says, the, 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 the wisdom of this world and the wisdom of this age is coming to nothing. We know that man is becoming more and more depraved as we continue. That means man, and man, man is becoming more and more sinful as the years go on. How, how, how many of us know that? I mean, right now, there's a, there's a legislation in our country. There's a draft legislation in our country that has just been passed by parliament or, or, or just been introduced for a public comment by parliament about for children to say how they, what gender they recognize themselves as. So you could either be male, female, or they, or them, or transvestite, lesbian, gay. So the pronoun that you're going to use to refer to them is because they they may say I I I I I I I identify as as them, not male, no female, not. It's getting complicated, and the challenge is it's it's a law. Your child can come and say, uh, "Don't call me boy." Oh, why, why? You get, it's going to be a real challenge in our face. So the wisdom of this world is going. Whew, whew. The standards are going lower, 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 lower. And I'm not only talking about that, but every system, whether it be family systems. Right now, in the UK, children can sue their parents for not parenting them as they want to be parented. And there are villages that they have where teenage children are staying on their own because they do not want to, they became lords of the state living on their own because they can't parent. And now in the pandemic, the challenge is that that system cannot contain itself. So these children are finding themselves exposed to all sorts of evils, whether it be abuse, whether it be sexual abuse, mental abuse, physical abuse, finding themselves in drugs and alcohol, because the system, the family system has been broken down, and now you try to replace it with a pseudo system that cannot sustain it. We've got to come to that place where, the, where we understand that the wisdom of this world is failing. And so we have to apply the word in everything that we do. If we don't do this, we're going to be challenged, people. Come on. Yeah. I want you to hear me. If we're going to allow the system of this world and you say, I do what other people do. No, 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 no. What is it based on? So the next time you go to vote, think about what you're voting for. Amen. I'm not telling who to vote. I'm saying think about it. Does that person carry my value system? Do they propose things that will be con incongruent to the word of the Lord and to my life? Or they say, no, we can serve whatever, worship whatever. Amen? The Bible says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, a hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of, of, of our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. That means when he talks about the rulers of this age, he's talking about the devil and, and, and the demon spirits that was behind. Remember, it wasn't just the people taking Jesus to crucify him. 
demonic spirits overcame them and they took Jesus to the cross. And understand it was part of the same community that was a few days before that saying, Hosanna. What changed between a few days, a Sunday and a Friday? A few days, what changes your, your conversation from Hosanna to crucify him? The Spirit must have overtaken you. And the Bible says, and none of, none of these rulers of the age knew, that means that Satan and, the, and his angels did not know that if they took Jesus to the cross, they were only accelerating the purposes of God. Because if they knew it was going to accelerate the purposes of God, it was going to fulfill God's plan of establishing a whole generation of people that will establish the kingdom, Jesus would not have went to the cross. Purpose would not have been fulfilled. So we need to understand this. But then the Bible says, but it is written, I has not seen no ear heard. Look at this in context. Let's read it again. Which none it says, but we speak to you the wisdom of God in a mystery, hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of age knew, for if they had known it, they would not have taken or not have crucified the Lord of glory. But it is as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. That means, he's in making a distinction here that there's a wisdom in this world. But it doesn't contain the wisdom of God. But that which contains the wisdom of God, if you know the wisdom of God, you won't go with what you see. But he says you won't go with what you feel. He says there are things that your eye has not seen, your ear did not hear. It didn't even enter your heart. Things that God has prepared for you. That means there are things in the wisdom of God that God has for your deliverance, for your, for, for your victory, for your purpose that is not being revealed as yet. But if you begin to believe him, he says, these things God has prepared for those who love them. That means you can only access that which is the unseen realm, the spirit realm, that which is in the heart of God for us when we're in relationship with Him. Amen? That means when you get to know Him. He says, but God has revealed them to us through the Spirit. So that means how does God communicate His will? How does God communicate His hidden wisdom? He says, through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man, except the Spirit of man which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. That means, he's saying, in you, no one knows what you are going through. Amen? That means you can be husband and wife, but there are certain things that you deal with. That not even your spouse will know. But the Bible says the spirit in man. That means not the spirit of man. The spirit of man knows what you are dealing with. He says in the same way, the spirit of God can reveal that which, God, which is of God. So we have now received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit who is from God, that we may know the things that God had freely given to us. Amen? He says, These things we speak not in the words of man's wisdom, teachers, but in, as the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And But natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can they know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who knows the spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For he who has known the mind of the Lord, that we, he may instruct him, but we have this mind of Christ. Wow. When you look at this, God is saying to us, 
Firstly, he says, what I'm doing is I'm revealing myself to mature people. That means there's a difference. You know, sometimes if someone says to you, you're immature. What does it mean? It means you're not acting as you should act. That means by now, you should know certain things. Paul says, when, you were, when I was a child, I acted like a child. I did childish things. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Amen? That means adults behave differently from children. Now, I, I have a challenge sometimes where people say, treat me like an adult. You're treating me like a child. I said, but if you stop acting like a child, I stop treating you like a child. So the conversation must start is, is your behavior childish? Or is your behavior mature? Because mature people can handle a conversation. How many of you know that? Mature people can take correction. Mature people can take direction. Amen? Yeah. But if you're the kind of person that gets into a conversation, you're throwing your toys out the car, kicking and screaming, you're throwing a tantrum, it's almost as if you're a 30-year-old person in a 12-year-old body, or you're a 50-year-old in, you know, in a body of a 3-year-old. You know, you're throwing your tantrums, but you're not having a conversation about what is happening. God is saying, firstly, Mature people understand there's a difference between natural wisdom and godly wisdom. And so the first point of our departure is that are we operating in natural wisdom? The wisdom of man, or are we operating in the wisdom that comes from God? Because if we come to that place where we're operating in natural wisdom, then the Bible says the things of the spirit will seem foolish to you. That means if you go to somebody and you say, the Spirit of the Lord is telling me this, and the person says, oh, show me how it, show me. That means that person is operating in a natural wisdom. So whatever you're going to say to them after that in that conversation doesn't make sense. I had a conversation the other day with somebody, and uh, they were just going through some stuff, and we've had several conversations, and I said, you need to do this need to do this, 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 this. This is what's going to address it because you, I've heard you say this over and over and over again. Apply this. And the person said, yeah, yeah, but this, but this. Then I said, okay. Then I said, I've got nothing else to say. Now. How many of you know that sometimes we, we seek counsel but we don't want to hear it? Yeah. Amen? So get to that place where we seek with godly wisdom. Amen? Mm -hmm. The second thing is that God says there's a secret wisdom in God, but He reveals it to us through His Spirit. How do I access knowing the mind of God through the Spirit of God? Why? Because the Spirit searches the deep things of God. Amen? That means there are things that are secret that God wants to give you clues, direction that can help you to live your life better. But you've got to access it from God. Amen? And it says, who can know the mind of God except the Spirit of God that reveals it to us? And then he says, but we have this mind of Christ. Amen? Do you have the mind of Christ? Do you apply the mind of Christ in everything that you do? That means in your everyday choices. You see, this is why I started off the question as, am I in control? Is it the flesh or the natural man or natural wisdom leading my life? Or is it, I spent time with the Lord. I've got the word from the Lord. I've got direction from the Lord. This is what God is saying for me. Because at the end of the day, if it's just natural wisdom, you're going to begin to find yourself changing based on circumstances. But the wisdom of God will prevail irrespective of the circumstances around because I've got the word from the Lord. And then God said to me, this is what is going to happen. That means, when the angel of the Lord came to Mary and told her, you, uh, you know, uh, blessed are you amongst women. You're going to bear a child. It came in the place where it will present some cultural difficulties for her. 
It would place, place some relationship difficulties on her. But she understood that, that she was going to give birth to not just an ordinary child, but a child that will begin to change and be the Messiah. So she had to understand that the journey will be different than from other children. So you've got to come to that place where you understand. John 15 verses 9 says that we are not of this world, but we are part of the kingdom of God. And we have to be able to distinguish between this. Let's go to, to, to birth, Proverbs chapter 19. I just want to read just a few portions of scripture for you. Verse 21 or 20, you can read there. It says, listen to counsel. Is that 19? Yeah. Proverbs 19, verse 21. Sorry. Proverbs 22. Yeah, 19, verse 21. You read verse 20 first, right? Listen to counsel, receive instruction that you may, may be wise in your latter days. There are many plans in man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that is what will stand. Amen? What is desired in man is kindness, but a poor man, and a poor man is better than a liar. Scripture is called. But verse 21 says, there are plans, there are many plans in man's heart, but it is the Lord's counsel or the Lord's will that will stand. How many of you know all of us have plans for our lives. But how much of our plans have its origins in God's plan for us? Amen? We have plans. I, 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 uh, uh, many years ago, I thought that I would be studying the police when I'm 49 years old. And I said on the 49th year, six months I was going to retire. I was going to take up my whole pension. You know, once you get 50, you can't, take, you can't retire give you early retirement. Amen? So you thought, yeah, you know, do this. A little bit I idea that 35 was different, changed. And so I want you to know, you may have a plan for your life, but is it in the will of the Lord for you? That which is in the will of the Lord will be established. For those that are finding uh, we've got quite a bit of young people here that in a few years will get married. And uh, it's very important to know is this in the will of God for my life? This person that happened. Because otherwise I can spend time and energy and invest in something that may hurt me down the line. I don't approach it out of feeling. I don't approach it out of just the fact that I'm scared to get hurt. But I approach it from the point of, is this the will of the Lord? Because if I've got a word and a confirmation in my heart, the rest of it is easy. It will work out. So I pray that you'll find the will of the Lord for your life in career choices. You know, yesterday I was uh, driving through an area and as I drove through the area, we had a, a family that was with us many years ago that was fellowshipping with us. And due to some work conditions, the person had an opportunity for a promotion and chose to move to another area. And when they chose to move to the other area, they came and spoke to me. And the brother came and spoke to me and shared with me, you know, this is going to be a good opportunity for them and this and that. The Lord didn't give me a witness in my heart. But as a, as a pastor, I just kept quiet. Didn't say anything. And I saw how my family moved and in the space of three months, their whole life changed. And uh, And as I drive through that area continuously, every time I drive through that area, I say, Lord, I made a mistake. I should have said, I should have sounded a warning. 
which I told him, don't do this. And as I saw a cycle of events go through the life of that family, every time I see them, I'm constantly reminded of this. I said, Lord, help me not to make the same mistake again. I'd rather sound that now. may not be a favorable voice, but I'd rather sound it than leave it. Some of you would know the family, you would know why I'm feeling what I'm feeling right now. But I pray today, don't do that. There's a wisdom of God, there's a wisdom of man. Many are the plans of man's heart, but it's the will of God that will be established. May the Lord establish His will concerning your life. Don't just do it your way. Amen. Let's just bow together. Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. We are reminded of God of your grace and of your love and of your mercy. And I pray today, just move upon the hearts of your people. Let them understand that you're in control. Let them not relinquish control to just anybody or any person or anything. Let them come and submit themselves to you. Have your way in us. Have your way. Father, I pray over your people today, may they be blessed, may they be covered, may their steps be ordered by the Lord. You said the steps of a righteous man and woman is ordered by the Lord. Watch over them, Lord. Show yourself strong on their behalf. Let them grow in the wisdom and in the knowledge of God. We ask this in Jesus' name. Yes, the Lord.